So we'll have some more people here in a few minutes. Uh, we're getting ready to start a demonstration for Mario Woods, who was murdered by the San Francisco Police Department just a few short days ago, last Thursday, I believe. So we're here at the San Francisco Police Commission meeting that meets uh, once a month. And uh, I think we're supposed to try and blockade the meeting. We'll see what happens here in a minute. Out here in front of San Francisco City Hall, and this is a demonstration for Mario Woods, who was murdered by the San Francisco Police Department this past Thursday, Wednesday, December second. It has been a week already. Last Wednesday, at any rate, uh, in San Francisco's Bayview District, which is the uh, last African American enclave here in San Francisco. Uh, people of color have been systematically driven out of the city uh, through a combination of high rents, gentrification, um, increased living costs, and police persecution, um, which, uh, while the San Francisco Police Department tries to deny it, there is. I've experienced it in my own observations of experience the overt racism of the San Francisco Police Department. The murder of Mario Woods is not an isolated incident. Here in San Francisco, we've had numerous other people that have been murdered by trigger-happy police that have a shoot-first mentality. Uh, this murder was very similar to the police murder of Laquan McDonald in Chicago. Um, much props out to the people of Chicago. There was a crowd of at least a thousand people that were out marching in downtown Chicago. Uh, they marched last Black Friday and they were able to cause economic cost. There is an economic cost that goes along these Mario Woods will not be able to spend holidays with his family. Uh, Mario Woods uh, it's also been inferred that he has um, uh, he had a, he has mental health issues and that uh, more than half of the people that get killed by police here in San Francisco are people that have mental health issues. So at any rate thanks for coming on and joining us. This is your live streamer, Freeman Sullivan. We'll be getting started here in just a couple of minutes with the demonstration. I guess I could read the, there's a list of demands. This group, this event was organized by last 3%, meaning the last 3% of uh, people that live, that are left, the last people of color here in San Francisco, black people. Let me find the list of demands here. I got it in my pocket somewhere. I'll read them off. Thanks a lot for logging on. Uh, we have some demands here. Uh, the first one is that we demand that San Francisco Police Department release the names uh, of the officers. Chief Greg Sears released a statement promising the community that he will release the officers who discharged their guns uh, this week. And uh, because in uh, similar situations, the uh, San Francisco Police Department 
uh, holds on to those names and don't, doesn't release them. Uh, we demand a public apology right from the city and county of San Francisco to Gwendolyn Woods, the mother, to Mario Woods' family. Uh, Gwendolyn Woods is the mother of Mario. Uh, we demand the San Francisco Police Department and the city of San Francisco pay for the funeral of Mario Woods. Uh, we demand that Chief Sir be fired immediately uh, because this is not the first time that trigger happy police have murdered uh, young people of color here on the streets of San Francisco. Uh, so there's a pattern of abuse that goes along with what's going on today. Uh, the fifth demand is we demand an independent federal investigation as well as an independent external investigation. Right. Although Merrily stated he wants transparency through an investigation that respects family and communities of color, we must challenge his premature narrative. As we witnessed in many other officer-involved shootings, there exists a conflict of interest and direct bias among the police department and prosecution. We demand an independent federal investigation in, on the murder of Mario Wood, similar to the case of Oscar Graham. Uh, and then we demand that San Francisco fire the five police officers who murdered Mario Woods. Those are the bands. Getting started here in a minute. And as always, folks, my mobility issues always come into play here. It makes it hard for me to walk. So uh, just bear with me. I'll be moving here in a minute. Right here in front of City Hall in San Francisco. Glad you could join us. It's a cloudy, cool day, not very cold. 60 degrees. Those are very shocking murder to happen here in the city of San Francisco. How are you, man? Hey, not too bad. How you doing? All right. So you're getting around without your uh, chair, huh? I'll try to. Cool. Down here for Mario Woods. Yeah. Are you going inside? Uh, maybe. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how much energy I have. Oh, are they going to shut down the meeting? What are they going to do? Let them talk a little bit or what? <laughs> I don't think there's going to be much talking. Do they? They? Um, I know the first hour of the police commission hearings are closed to the public. Oh, really? Yeah. They, so what they, time they open? What time do they well, start? Well, it supposedly starts at five o'clock, but they, they have an hour where it's not in the, open to the public at all. They'll be going there at six. I don't know. Try to. I don't know whether it's before the meeting starts or after the public. Depends. I haven't been to a police commission hearing in quite a while since they asked for tasers, which is another issue that we're talking about here. Is the first thing that that Chief Sur says is, you know, he makes excuses. He says, "Well, if we would have had yeah, tasers, yeah, yeah. we wouldn't have killed him." Well, you know, Chief Sur, we have to say that first of all, um, as somebody who was went to the health commission hearings that testified against police ta use of tasers, is that people get killed by tasers all the time. Uh, and whether Mario Woods or not is a matter of conjecture, but uh, it happens all the time. Are used as instruments of torture, many, 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 many times. And uh, I don't think it would have been the most effective way of dealing with with somebody who's with a knife. I've actually confronted people with knives on two different occasions, and the best way is either you have a shield or a blanket and rush them really quick. So when they go to try to stab you, you can wrap the knife up in the blanket Shit, and the get cops, that away from them. The fucking cops don't know what to do. They're, they don't want to know. Right? What to they do. said it was a six to eight inch knife. Well, it was one of those little kitchen steak knives, right? So at any rate, so those are some of the issues that we're dealing with here. And the police in San Francisco don't need tasers. All right? They already got enough in their arsenal. Like, you know, basically it came down to a bunch of cops acting cowardly. And not dealing with the situation as it should have been dealt with. Yeah, yeah it's a, you know, it happens all the time here in the city. There's a, uh, O'Shane Evans was murdered by San Francisco police. Um, people. Alex Nieto. Yeah, Alex Nieto. Uh, Amacar Lopez. The guy in the Bart Plaza about four years ago at the Bart station. 
right? He had a knife. They walked, they walked out of the car. They shot him within five seconds. Yep. You know? And then there was a guy on Market Street with, um, he was disabled, and he had, he was missing, a, you know, he had a, a prosthesis, and the, uh, the police beat the hell out of him. It took 12 cops. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw the right? video recently, pretty recently. Yeah, it wasn't too long ago. Yeah, like 8th and Market, or somewhere around Yeah, there. right down here. Yeah. Yeah. Twitter going. Remember the guy that was in the wheelchair? They shot him a bunch of times. Like right. 10th and, 10th and Mission. 10th and Howard. So, he had a knife. He lived, but they, I mean, that, that was only because they were bad shots. I mean, it was like... So this is nothing new. It's nothing new here. And then over in England, they just armed a guy who had a machete. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Oh, the guy that chopped up the soldier. I don't know. I don't know. I just Somebody heard, on the tube. I just oh, heard oh, it. Oh, recent one. Yeah. Recent one. So we're going to go around here and get some better shots for you in just a second. Um, you know, do you log in and participate in chat? Love to hear from you. Hey, Susie. Thanks for watching. Pleasants. Thank you, brother. And Rob, tomorrow. Hey, guys. Thanks for all logging on. Uh, I don't know if I was going to get any uh, trolls, racist trolls on this, but I'm glad you're here for me. Much love. Uh, I'm out here. Wouldn't be able to do this without people that are watching. That's for damn sure. Thanks a lot. Very much appreciate it. Uh, let's see. I started. Right, we're going to move around here in just a second since things get moving. We're down here at San Francisco City Hall. Got a good crowd of starting to build up. Uh, yeah. Which, uh, the latest one? I just sent one this morning. Oh, about this? Uh, no, I, 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 I didn't oh, you can look. All right, so, do you guys know each other, by the way? No. This is Dwight. Okay. And this guy, I don't know his name. Clark. Clark. Long time activist, journalist, like citizen journalist. Hey, there, there's actually got a nice crowd of people watching already, which is always I'm always thankful for. So, uh, yeah, another police murder. San Francisco, you know, people in San Francisco like to think that they're this is a more liberal, safer city for people, but you know, police kill people here all the time. Mario Woods' life, you know, his loss of his life is not anything unusual for San Francisco. Uh, we have the same police state here as everywhere else. Get ready to start. I have a hard time standing for long periods of time, so do forgive me. I have to take a seat every once in a while. Everywhere we go, people want to know. People want to know. 
want to know. People want to know. Who we are. Who we are. So we tell them. So we tell them. We are Black San Francisco. We are Black San Francisco. The last Black San Francisco. The last Black San Francisco. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love each other and support each other. We must love each other and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must must love each other and support each other. We must love each other and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love each other and support each other. We must love each other and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. Anyway, for those of you just joining us, we're here at San Francisco City Hall. This is your live streamer, Freeman Sullivan. Thanks for watching. Anyone interested in doing a public comment in the police commission meeting? It's in room 400. Some people have already went in to sign up to speak at the police commission meeting. There's only two minutes to speak per person. Our goal is to make sure we demand justice for Mario Woods and his family. And we want Chief Sir fired. We cannot stress that enough. When you go in there, we are demanding that Chief Sir is fired. The police commission must hold these police officers and this police chief accountable for their failure the black community. Testing. Testing. There we go. Anyone who has the at the flyer that has the demands on the back and Mario Woods' face on the front Please take a look at them. It has stats on there as well for to inform you about the racism that happens here in San Francisco. San Francisco has the fastest growing inequality rates in any other city in this country. And many people do not know that because you see these new buildings being built. We have Uber, we have Twitter, and people see this city as this liberal place with technology, right? And so oftentimes the black and brown people, the working class people who built this city are not remembered in the rest of the country. So it's important that today we call attention to the fact that this city is racist. city is racist. Blatantly so. San Francisco also has the fastest out-migration of black people since post-Katrina New Orleans. San Francisco has the fastest out-migration of black people since post-Katrina New Orleans. We are in a state of emergency. This is a, a disaster that is happening. It's not a natural disaster. It's a man-made disaster. It's a deliberate systemic disaster. It's a genocide being committed against black people. Worldwide, a genocide being committed against black people. But San Francisco is comfortable under the guise of liberation and economics. 
so people don't see black people hanging from trees, but kids see Mario Woods murdered in front of them after they get off out of school. It's not right. No one has, no one from the city has sent any crisis team to console these children who witnessed Mario's murder. Oh wow! Middle school age children witnessed this man shot over 20 times. That is how San Francisco feels about black people. Feels about black children. San Francisco doesn't give a fuck about black people. Hey, hey. Tell them who your grandfather was, Letitia, please. Please, tell them. I'm a fourth generation Baby Hunters Point native. Yeah. I'm representing the last 3% of black San Francisco. Tell me your legacy. And it's important that we fight for our right to stay here. Yeah. This is yeah. our city. We built this city. Yeah. Our blood is on this city. Our grandparents are buried in this city. It is our right, it is our duty to keep fighting for the right to be here, for the right to walk through the streets without being murdered in cold blood. And it's also our duty to take responsibility for demanding justice. We cannot be complacent. We have to always speak out. Tonight we're lighting candles to create a memorial for Mario Woods. Oftentimes the city tries to portray black people, brown people as suspects when they kill us. They call us suspects after they kill us to excuse their demonic behavior. Police officers aren't mentally screened. They're not hold, held accountable for the way that they do their jobs without regard for human life. That's why it's easy for them to kill us. They don't see us as human. So we want to create this memorial to remember Mario because he was a human life. And oftentimes we get caught up in the politics and the bullshit and the rhetoric and we forget that a life has been lost. And this death, it triggered many, many people um, in my community, people have been crying, people have been in pain, people have been depressed, people have had physical aches because Mario Woods is murdered. And people ask, why do you care so much? You're not even related to him, but he was my brother. He was my brother, not only because we're melanated people, not only because we come from God, we're sun-kissed, we're beautiful black people, because he was my neighbor. I don't need to know someone to have compassion for them. I don't need to know someone to have love for them. And the liberation of black people is the liberation of all people. So that does not mean all lives matter. That means that all black lives matter. And what you have to understand is all lives matter, you're not getting to the root of the problem. Once black people are free, everybody is free. Yeah. From Tibet to Palestine. Yeah. There is a genocide being commi committed against blackness worldwide. It's not about individuals, it's about the dichotomy of black versus white. For thousands of years, there has been a dichotomy of black versus white. In every country, not just this country. And we have to see how all oppressed people around the world are being discriminated against and killed because of their black skin, because of their darker skin. Now's the time, rise up! Rise up! So when we say black power, that means that we're, we're saying all power to the people. All power to the people. I would like us to, um, 
actually take a moment of silence to remember Mario. I think that it's important that we pause and acknowledge his presence and the energy that Mario's death has brought to the city. Similar to how sometimes in families it takes a funeral to bring everybody together, we have to start seeing one another as a village, as a tribe. If we don't protect each other and love each other, then one of our own gets murdered by state-sanctioned violence. Mario died alone. So it's important that we show up for him and show out for him as a community to let him know that his death did not go in vain. quick because uh, they're about to open up. I, I just want to say that uh, I want to really thank these sisters for holding this down. These, these are young, powerful, people who have work out here in these streets. They have till 12, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning every night trying to put this down and hold it down. For our people, by our people, you know what I'm saying? When we talk about, the, the th there's a thousand people a month that are getting pushed out of San Francisco, white, yellow, green, and brown. I'm talking about gay, lesbian, straight. They, they, we, they are being pushed out through class war and the, and the, and the, and the most the most shit on class is, is the black. The, the, the black gay people are the most homeless. The people of color out here, the, the LGBTQIA, are, are, the, are the people out here who are the, mo who are the most marginalized. And, and they're the ones who are sitting out here homeless and hustling out on these streets. And I used to see them up on Polk Street, and they're still out there, you know what I mean? The, these people is out here with, with nothing, and they aren't being helped. And when you're losing a thousand people a month, it ain't just, it, it, that's why it's not just a white thing. And when somebody comes to me and say, what about the black on black crime? Well, you know what? If we're supposed to hold the police to a criminal standard, yeah. Yeah. Let's, we're talking about criminals. Yeah. That's right. We're talking about people that kill people because of some drugs or, so, or, or being mad because somebody messed with somebody's woman or whatever stupidity that they're shooting people over. Are we supposed to keep the police to a criminal standard? Yeah. No. Because, because with the police union, they're able to get away with murder and rape and assault and then get fired, not get charged, and get a job. Because if a doctor killed 20 people, he wouldn't have a, he wouldn't have a medical license. But they could come out here and, and go from San Jose to Oakland to San Francisco right. and have assaults and batteries in every single city. That's right. That's right. We're going to have one more sister speak real quick, and then we're going to go up here. I, I really want to emphasize, we all want to be on the same page. We all want to take... This is black leadership. I'm not the leader. We are the leaders, right? And these sisters are the leaders. We are all the leadership. We lead black leadership. We don't want to be on the same page. We don't want one person to go up in there and start screaming and yelling. We're going to go up in there as a group and, and move as one. How y'all doing out there tonight? Hey, how you doing? My name is Ranisha Johnson. I'm a resident of the Bayview District, also part of the last 3% of Black San Francisco, let me not forget that. And also, someone who grew up in the neighborhood with Mario. So although I'm happy to see so many faces out here tonight, it's also upsetting that we have to celebrate this young man's life this way. I think what's most important is that we are not only honest about what happened to Mario, but being honest with ourselves about what's happening in the city of San Francisco. Like I've been saying the last couple nights that we've been organizing around Mario, is that we have to look at the historical context to what's going on today and also um, how it relates to the case of Mario as well. San Francisco likes to pride itself on being a very liberal city. 
I beg to differ. That's right. They like to pride itself on being very diverse. But yet, like we've already reiterated, we make up 3% of the population, but yet 50, 56% of those individuals who are incarcerated. When we also think about the homeless population, a large percent of those are people of color. There's a direct relationship to the fact that the San Francisco Police Department just increased their budget for more staffing, which means the over-policing of communities of color. That's right. And we act like that has no linkage to how more than, more than five officers rolled up on Mario and they executed him. What I think is more upsetting is how politicians in the city are able to hide behind this bullshit politics. There's this ongoing rhetoric of accountability that we have yet to see. Since the Alex Nieto case, since 1997, there has been Aaron Williams, who was black, killed by the police. There's Idris Stalley, who was black, killed by the police. Jaheed Akbar, who was black. Craig Holden, who was black. Tyron Watts, who was black. Martin Ruff, who was black. Cameron Boyd, who was black. Gus Rugley, Asa Sullivan, Oliver Big Olefti, Ben Bull, Catherine Euclid, Fred Prolong, Kenneth Harding, O'Shane Evans, and not to mention the violence inflicted on those who are from our brown communities as well, too. So when the police or the mayor makes statements like, we're going to arm our police officers with tailors, I laugh. I think that's bullshit. That's allowing them from escape. That's allowing them to escape from the accountability. That's right. I don't want to hear shit about Taylor tasers. Yeah, right. Especially when your officers can shoot down a 26-year-old man with a mental illness. Yeah, right. Well, when when the city is paying funds for officers to be trained in crisis intervention to be able to deal with individuals who have mental illness. That's right. But yet you want to expand the city jail? That makes no sense. Right. Also, Mayor Ed Lee released a statement saying that he wants transparency with an investigation. Well, we know that's bullshit, too. That's right. There's so much corruption within the police department under the administration of Greg Sir. He was involved with the racist, the, there was 14 officers involved in a racist tech scandal where they were sending racist and homophobic text messages. He also, we spent, what, $150 million, I think, to support him in a lawsuit scandal as well, too, this year? But yet, when I walk through my community, we need housing. We need more services for those who are missing. We need more after-school programs. If people want to talk about Mario's criminal history, we always want to talk about the symptoms of the system. But it's the system that needs to be changed and needs to be addressed. Right. So it takes the hood to save the hood, and I'm from the hood. And it's good to see the hood out here because we're able to take care of our streets. And we need to not allow them to pacify us with bullshit. So we're, we're going to watch and we're going to allow them to keep making their statements. But what they don't know is that if they don't hold themselves accountable, the community will hold them accountable. Yeah. Right. And I'm committing every day, like I've been doing, and all of, us, all of us young people who have helped to organize this, we will continue to organize. And we invite other young people who are willing to take the stand to come with us. Because we won't be silent. That's right. This deserves national attention. Social media, it's not just about coming out to rallies, but what are you doing every day? Like I've said before, use social media. Have conversations with your family every day about how we can make changes to the system of racism, oppression. Every single day there's things that we can do. Hashtag last 3% to keep up with our organizing efforts as we move forward because this won't be the last. And what I, I also came here to say is don't lose hope. Be fired up. Because this is an example right now that we have power amongst each other. We can be fooled by the politics and all the money and all the bullshit. But at the end of the day, we know what's right. And we know he didn't deserve to die.
die like that. That's right. No we, don't, we don't deserve to live like that. No one. That's right. A three-year-old could have watched that film and been able to analyze that and see they shot him down in cold blood. Right. That's right. So what I want y'all to do is stay fired up. Yeah. Woo stay pumped up. People criticized Ferguson because they were out in the streets saying they were tearing up their own communities. But we're being gentrified. We don't own any of this shit. <laughs> and then make sure that we don't know we don't we know we don't own any of this shit. So I'm, I need people to be more fired up. I know y'all didn't come out to sit around. <laughs> now but realize when we come out we gathering up all right don't just leave the place and think we, we, we done talking because we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have a speak out as soon as we come out of this place because we have some of mario's family that needs to be heard but right now it's 5 30 and we don't want and we don't want a bunch of kumbaya i don't want to say the word i'll say it out we don't want, want a bunch of minimalists kumbaya yeah. types <laughs> so people are going to go inside for the hearing of it and make sure you bring to the bands. We want people to, every time you speak, I won't speak be live out to the bands. Okay, we want everybody to be on the same page. We're going to come right out. We're going to have a speak out. We'll put people in, in from Mario's family to speak. And we'll have a couple of, we'll have a couple of these real good revolutionaries to come, to come put some knowledge in here. You know, uh, black power, all power to people. Power to people. Yeah. All right, let's head up right here. How you too, my friend? So you have this all the speakers. There's going to be a bunch of people going inside to the. Your old buddy free man here has got to find a place to sit down for a minute. Actually, you know what? We should take There we go. At any rate, we had a nice little crowd here of about 100 people out here from Mario Woods. Uh, like I said, if you want to find out more information or if you would like to contact the group who is organizing this, it's the last 3%. Hashtag last 3%. Without the, the hashtag last 3, the number, and percent spelled out. P E R C E N T at gmail.com. And those are the organizers of the demonstration today. So if you want to get a hold of them, uh, and, and people are going to go in. I know that if I tried to live stream inside of City Hall, that uh, I would lose my connection. So 
at any rate, thank a lot. Thanks a lot for everybody for watching. Thanks for your support and love. And I'll be back uh, probably next week covering the APAC demonstration here in San Francisco. Anyway, much love and much peace. Have a good evening.